Hello everybody on YouTube, it's Michael here again and this video is going to be part two of the Genos 2 tutorial in which I'll be showing you more in-depth stuff than I did in part one. Now more, more in-depth stuff which consists of registration memory, um, assignable functions such as assignable buttons and slider and knob assign etc one touch settings and many more in-depth functions thank you very much for watching and hope you enjoy okay so this is going to be part two of the tutorial of the yamaha genos 2 where i'll be showing you more in-depth stuff and more in-depth functions etc part one of the tutorial um i was just showing you the basic functions of Genos 2. Okay, so now the first thing that I'm going to show you of part two of the Genos 2 tutorial, and that is updating to the latest firmware. So I will show that to you. Okay, so before I do that, I am going to go to menu, and we are going to select utility. And this is where we can find out what firmware version the Genos 2 is. So we go to system and currently my version, my Genos 2 version is version 1.01, .01, as you can see there. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to update the firmware. So I better make sure that I have the USB stick connected to the keyboard. You download the latest firmware on the Yamaha website. I know that at the moment the keyboard has just been launched not long ago, so there isn't a major update yet. I'm sure that there will be in future. Okay, so now what we're going to do is that we're going to turn off the keyboard. We just wait for the keyboard to turn off. There you go. And now as shown on this clip here, in order to update the firmware, you need to press the um, power button whilst holding down the start stop button. And that will call up the Genos 2 firmware update. Now loading, please wait a moment. It can take some time. It, it really depends on how big the firmware is going. The firmware update is going to be. But this is only going to be a, a minor update. It will update my Genos 2 to version 1.01 .01 to 1.02. So not a big update, probably some like fixes, bug fixes, etc. OK, just waiting for it to load. Before I take the next step. OK, the update program version 1.02 to start installation, please press the start stop button. So we're going to go ahead and press the start stop button. Notice, do not try to turn off the power until all installations are finished. OK, so it's um, on step one at the moment. So we just wait for it to update. Step three, step two happened so quickly. <laughs> now installing, please wait a moment. Shouldn't be long now. And also, as some of you like 
that might have a, a, a Tyros or a PSRS or a PSRSX keyboard. The same thing applies to those keyboards as well. You turn on the keyboard whilst holding down the start stop button to update the firmware. Step five, almost done. should be finished very soon now. And there you go. Updating has been completed. Turn the power off. The version of the installed program is version 1.02. So we just turn off the keyboard as normal and simply just turn it back on without pressing any buttons. And that's it. And that is the firmware updated. I'm sure that there will be more firmware updates in the future on the Genos 2. Because if I remember like the, the Genos 1, I think that was like version 1.20, then there was a version 1.30, and then a version 1.40, which introduced the voice guide for blind and visually impaired people. And then after that, it was then version 2, which had more features, including Chord Looper and the new version 2 Superior Pack. And that was from the um, original Genos. OK, so now we're going to go to Menu and go to Utility and tap that. Go to system and now our version was from 1.01 .01 to 1.02 and that's it and that is how you update your genus 2 to the latest firmware the same way to update the firmware also applies to the tyros keyboards uh, the psr sx keyboards and psr s keyboards OK, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is touchscreen calibration. So over time, if you have the, the keyboard or any other keyboard that has a touchscreen for quite some time, and then you think that the touchscreen isn't working as properly as it should. Well, I'll show that to you. We just go to menu and utility. And this time we go to touchscreen slash display. Now this happened with my um, Genos One that the touchscreen wasn't really. I'll, I'll just show you quickly, like the Genos One touchscreen. Like as I was pressing these, but um, like user and preset, like it it wasn't working unless I press it like down there, which tells me that the screen, the touchscreen, isn't working properly. Well, simple, simple, just go to yep, utility, touchscreen, display, and we go to calibration, in which we can calibrate the um, touchscreen. It, it tells you to touch the precise center of each mark shown on the display. So we've got to touch the center of each of these here. So we've got to touch that, I'll touch that, and touch that one, and then there'll be another one up there, and there'll be another one down there, and press that. And then we press the center one. Calibration complete. And then once you do that, your touchscreen should work properly. And also um, with the touchscreen, you can either have the sound on or off. Usually I prefer mine to be off. But if, if you have the sound on, the it will make a just a tiny little pinging noise every time you select something on the touchscreen. 
Let me just turn the keyboard up so you can really hear. Notice that it makes a sound whenever I select different things. And if you want it off, just simply press sound right here and it will turn off. And now there's no sound when I select different functions. So there you go. And that is the touchscreen calibration and the touchscreen sound whenever you press like functions and selecting different sounds and styles. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is Chord Looper. Now, Chord Looper was introduced in the PSR SX900, and it's made its way onto the Genos 2, and also the original Genos with the version 2 update. Now, I'll show that to you. Now, Chord Looper is that you can make chord progressions with the styles, and you can turn on the Chord Looper and the Chord Looper will automatically play the chords for you without having to do it yourself. So let's just say that if you're playing a song that um, requires both hands to play the melody, then the Chord Looper will do the rest for you. So I'll show that to you. We just go to Menu and we go to Chord Looper here. Now, there are presets on here. There are some preset Chord Loopers. So these are presets built in on the keyboard. Let's just take the first one, for instance. And now we can play these chord loopers back. So they've also got names for them, like popular pop, pop alternative, 80s pop, 50s doo-wop, etc. And we're going to select the first one, popular pop, which has a chord progression of C, G, A minor and F. And now what that does is that without you playing the chords, it will play the chords for you. So here's this here button, the chord looper button, you just press that and you would press a start stop and the keyboard will play the chords for us. Notice, both hands, I'm not doing anything. The keyboard is doing it for me. Also, these chord progressions can be used in any style of any tempo. So let's just take another style, for instance. Uh, let's just take, um, let's go to a, a rock, I'm um, sorry, retro pop. And let's just try like this one here, 80s chintzy pop. The chord progressions will still remain the same. We can also have other ones here, a pop alternative, which has some different chord progressions. So that's just some of the preset chord loopers. And now you, you can create your own. So I'll show that to you. I will new playlist. I'm sorry, playlist. New. New chord looper bank. In which we can make our own chord progressions. It could be chord progressions randomly. Or it can be from a well-known song. Anything. So let's just do a few examples. So I'm going to select one. Uh, so we're going to do record. We're going to record, press record, and now the keyboard waits for us to play. And I'm just going to do a few chord progressions and then work on another and then another, etc. To show you how Chord Looper works. So here we go.
So that should be, hang on, try it. There we go, it should work now. Okay, um, let's just do that again, because um, it was one bar higher. Let's try it now. Oh, I need to record. There we go. Okay, and now that should play back. There we go. Now we want to memorise that. So we press memory, select the chord loop and memory number to memorize the data. We tap that and there we go. That has been saved. And now that has been saved. I can go to, I can press, um, I can go to another chord progression. Let's just do another one, sort of a. Okay. And now we're going to memorize that as well. There we go. Oh, no, sorry. It's um, using the same one as I did previously. Oh, it's because I forgot to press record. <laughs> there we go. Let's try that again, shall we? Okay. And now that should be played back. And now we want to memorize that one. So we press memory and select one of eight. So we're going to select two. There we go. So now we got call progression one saved and call progression two saved. Um, I'm going to do one more example with the called looper. And let's go, we just, pr we press record. And now the keyboard waits for us to play. And now we can play that back. And now we want to memorize that. We're going to select number three. Okay, so that's the chord progressions of the um, chord looper saved. So here's the third, here's the first chord progression. And now the second. And now the third. And then once you're happy with everything, we can then save our chord progression, our chord looper, etc. So we just go to save and we go to save here. And then from here, we give it a name. So we just, it's, it's named chord looper bank. But since I am doing it for this tutorial video, I am going to go ahead and name it example, because this is an example of the called looper and how it works. We press OK, and that's our called looper saved. Obviously, you can add more called loopers here, up to eight. We have presets, which are built in on the keyboard and user. This is where you can store and save your own chord looper progressions. So let me just show one more time. These are the chord progressions that I've done. Yep. Can be played using any style.
So there you go. And that is Chord Looper, in which you can store and save your own chord progressions so that you have both hands free to play melodies on your right hand. If there's a song that you're playing that requires two hands to play the melody. Chord Looper really comes in handy when it comes to things like that. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is direct access, using this here direct access button. Now, usually you go to different menus by pressing the menu button and you get things like lyrics or live control, registration sequence, etc. Uh, let's go through um, like um, style anything really but and, and chord looper as well but there is another way as well which is much more convenient we press direct access and we press any of these buttons or sliders knobs etc and it will take us directly to that menu so let's show you chord looper for example we just press direct access and we press chord looper. It takes us straight to the chord looper sequence. And let's, um, let's take registration memory, for instance. We press one of these and it takes us straight to the um, registration bank info. Or oh, registration bank, registration bank edit. Or if we go to direct access and press the accompaniment, it takes us to the split point and fingering mode. Or we go press direct access and maybe just touch the slider here a bit, which takes us straight to the live control in which we can assign the sliders and knobs, etc. etc. When it comes to assignable buttons and knob and slider assign joystick assign i will show those to you later on in this video or if you've gone through multiple menus but you just want to go to the home page just tap press direct access and then press exit and that will take you straight to the home menu or what direct access one touch setting it gives you the style information of the sounds whenever you um press the one touch settings here it gives you each voices of each one touch setting, one, two, three, and four. Or direct access and multi-pad control. It gives us the multi-pads. Direct access, but instead of pressing the slide, um, instead of moving the slider, I'm gonna move the knob. It just takes us straight to live control. And I'm gonna to touch the joystick. And now we have the pitch bend, um, sorry, um, joystick assign. Again, which I will show later on in this video. And there's some more. So direct access, transpose, direct access, tempo, or direct access, I'm pressing art one button which takes us to the assignable. Direct access, um, direct access, I'm gonna press playlist. It takes us to the playlist. Um, direct access, song, takes us to the song guide, and um, song setting rather, and so on. And now with direct access, it just gives you easy and quick access to certain menus. Direct access, I'm going to pr press intro to. It just takes us to the style behavior or main ver main variation, takes us to the mixer. Ending takes us to. So it does all sorts of things and it's really convenient if you just want to get access to a certain part of the keyboard quickly. So there you go. And that is direct access in which you press direct access and press any one of the buttons on the keyboard and it will call up the um, menu 
related to the button that you have pressed, such as called looper, registration, one touch setting, etc. And that is direct access. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is FM synthesis. Yes, FM synthesis and DX7 presets. Now on Genos 2, we have the FM sound engine on there, just like it was on the Yamaha montage synthesizers. Although the, the, the sound technology isn't new. Well, it, it is new for a home keyboard like Genos 2, for instance. Now, FM synthesis was a major breakthrough when the um, when Yamaha launched the DX7 in 1983. That was the first to feature the, the FM synthesis that really defined the sounds of the 1980s. So I'll just go through some of the um, sounds for you. Some of the FM and DX7 presets. So we have the toy piano, DX7. Let's go to E piano. And let's go to FM 80s ballad hit. So not all of them have DX7 on, on them because um, they're just like FM. And now we have E Piano 1, which was the most famous sound patch of the 1980s with the DX7. So. <laughs> the only difference being is that there's actually reverb and DXP, um, DSP on here. There you go we've got some reverb and we have some delay dsp now um dx7 didn't have reverb or dx and um, dsp <laughs> i was going to call it dxp for some reason <laughs> yes now we go through some more fm saw pluck So it's not just DX7 presets that are on there. There's also other FM sounds. And let's go through some more categories. Let's say bass, for instance. DX7 bass. We've got some other DX7 presets as well. I'm just going to go through some. I'm just going to go through a couple more DX7 presets. Calliope, if that's how it's pronounced. Um, now we go to um, accordion. And we have DX7 harmonica. Okay, so that's some of the um, DX7 presets. 
I'm going to go through some more FM sounds if I can find some. Let's go to, there we go, we've got some FM pads. So there you go, and that's his FM synthesis, where we have some FM sounds, and we also have some DX7 presets as well. Now I know that um, FM synthesis isn't a new technology. Um, it was introduced in 1983 with the DX7, which defined the sound of the 1980s. And then there was also some other ones as well, like there was a DX11, DX21, DX27. Now th those ones had the four operator FM synthesis when the DX7 has a six operator FM. And now, just like the DX7 presets, um, unfortunately, you can't edit the algo rhythms like you could on the original, on the actual DX7 in itself. Uh, some of you may know that I do have a DX7. Fantastic synthesizer. I, I still like using it. But I've never, I've never got round to like editing the algo rhythms because I know it takes a lot of time, a lot of patience to do. But that is something you can't do on Genos 2. So yes, there were some other ones. Um, as I said, the DX11, DX21, DX27 and the miniature DX100. And there was a DX7 Mark II. There was a DX7 2D and a DX7 2FD, which had the floppy drive. And then years later, Yamaha brought out a reface, um, a few reface keyboards. And one of them was called the Reface DX. And then FM synthesis made its way onto the Yamaha Montage synthesizers. Yep, the Montage and the newly launched Montage M. And now it has made its way for the first time on a home keyboard, the Genos 2. And that is FM synthesis and DX7 presets. OK, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you and that is the uh, comp fingering mode and split point. So I will show that to you. We can do it both ways, either by the menu, split and fingering, or an easier way, as I showed earlier, direct access and press a comp. Okay. Okay, so I've got the, the um, a comp turned on. And then we can have all sorts of different fingering types, depending on your skill. So, for those that don't know many chords and they're sort of like beginners of, um, like doing chords or, yeah, beginners are like, single finger, you just have to press one note one second as I um, make it so that you can see my fingers more on the um, this part of the tutorial so one moment that's better you can now see the as I'm doing the um, chord fingering mode etc so yep here is single finger Now, if you want to do a minor chord, we just press, say, C and this B flat. Or for A minor, we just A and A flat. Or, or to do major and minor seven chords.
Ja. So very simple, um, the single finger. And then we have multi-finger, which almost acts as, almost acts as single finger, except you can either do it single finger or multi-finger, so. And then we have fingered, So we have to play multiple notes. Fingered on bass, which is same as fingered, except the lowest note will play the bass. So I'm playing the F chord in this way, but the A note is the lowest. So we get a bass inversion. Let me just play the style. There we go. So that's the fingered on bass. Or we can have it on full keyboard, which is the entire keyboard. So now we can play the chords throughout the entire keyboard. So I'll show it to you. So. So that's the full keyboard and there's some more there's ai fingered which is what i use pretty much the whole time oh. similar to fingered it detects chords with only one or two keys so for example i play the c chord but i press these two or And then we have AI full keyboard. So again, the entire keyboard, but this time it's AI full keyboard. So I'll show that to you. Okay, so those are the different fingering types. The one I use the most is the AI fingered. And then we have split point. So by default, the style section is here. But we can change the split point. So let's just say I've put it up to B here. So. Or you can have it lower so so that's the style split point we also have a left hand split point now in order to do that we better turn on the left hand side of the keyboard let's just put that to default so we've got the left hand We can also split that, so let's just go and put it up one. We can put it up, so we got the style here. And we got the left hand here.
but there's also a split for the right hand. So there you go, I've just turned on the right hand. So So right, we need to change that. There we go. I think it's, but whenever I, oh no, we got, we can do it. There we go. That's, that's perfect. Yes. So we got, okay. So that's the um, split. So here's the style. And there's the left hand side. Right one and right two. And at the very top we have right three. So that's the split function in which we can change the style split point left and right three. Have them, as you can see on the screen, we can have them separate. So we've got the style separate, we've got the left separate, right one and two separate and right three at the very top. Okay, let me just put those back to normal. There you go, we just hold that down to get the default. Okay, finally we have the chord detection area, which is set to lower, but we can also set it to higher. And as you can hear on the left hand side, we got the bass, the manual bass. I think we can turn that off. Oh no, well we can, but chord detection area, upper and lower. So we can control chords on the right hand. That's it. Yep, we can control chords on the right hand and we got the manual bass on the left hand, so. Hopefully you can hear it. Oh, we better change the bass sound actually, so. To anything really, and let's just turn the left up so we can hear it a bit more. So we got chords as we changed it to the chord detection area to upper. We can do chords on the right hand whilst having the bass on the left hand. So let's show you. Okay, so that's the chord detection area. We're going to put all those back to normal now. There we go. So we got. There you go. So that's all back to normal. So there you go. And that is the style, the accompaniment, fingering type and split point and chord detection area where we, we can change the fingering types like single finger, multi finger, fingered on bass, etc. And we can change the split points on the style, the left hand side and the right free and call detection area where we it sets to lower. But if you select it as upper, you can control chords on the right hand. 
but usually people would um, control chords using the left hand. But you can do it either way, whichever is your preferred choice. And there you go. And that is a compliment style, fingering mode, split point and the chord detection. OK, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is a lot of assignable functions. And now we have here the sliders, uh, slider assign, knob assign. We also have assignable buttons. And we also have the joystick assign, which I don't think was on the original Genos, but on the Genos 2, you can assign the joystick to basically anything you want, even though the factory default would be the pitch bend and modulation. And I would also be showing you the pedal, ass pedal assign as well. OK, so first of all, I'm going to be showing you slider assign. Now, on top of there, hopefully you can see it, but it says B. I don't think these functions here can be assigned. But if I press slider assign, we have here one and two. Now these, one and two, can be assigned. By factory default, the slider assign on one is the styles part volume and keyboard volume. Hopefully you can see there. And the slider assign two, we have channel one, two, three, which is to do with like um, playing back MIDI files. But you can assign them and I will show that to you. So what I'm going to do is direct you to the screen and show you how to assign them. Just remember what they were originally assigned to. So we've got the rhythm one, two, bass chord, which is the style parts volume, and slider ass uh, assign two is called one, I'm sorry, channel one to 10 for MIDI playback. But what I'm going to do is assign some of them to something different. So I will show that to you. I will now direct you to the screen. So one moment. OK, so now that um, the screen is visible and you can also see the subscreen as well, I'm now going to be assigning some things within the um, slider assign. So I will show that to you. We can do it both ways. We can do it by either direct access, which is probably the, the quickest way to do it. Or we can go to menu and select. Oh, no, not that one. Assignable. Well, it's somewhere. But let's just do it um, the easy way, simply by pressing direct access. And I'm going to slightly touch one of the sliders. There you go. There you go. Yes, live control. And on the screen, hopefully you can see, we have the assign, the factory assign with the sliders. I won't assign them all. I will assign a few. So I will show that to you. So just go to slider assign one. Hopefully you can see here. OK, that's been changed. And now I'm going to assign some of these to different functions. So let's just take slider one, for instance. Volume. And press it again. And this is where we can change different functions. So slider one, type one, um, let's see, oops, overall. Oh no, how about master tempo for the first one? So now that slider is assigned to the tempo. So I'll show it to you. I'm not using the tempo button, I'm just using the slider. Okay, uh, next example, I'm going to select, let's see here, um, let's select slider number four. 
as I said, I'm not going to assign all of them. I'm just going to do a few just to show an example. OK. So I'm going to select. How about dynamics control? So now I've got that selected. Dynamics control on slider four. Notice on the screen, the volume changes on everything because of the dynamics. Now, the, the dynamics control and ambience is a new feature on Genos 2, but I will show you more of the ambience and dynamic controls in the next video. OK, I'm going to do one more example with the slider one and this time I'm going to select slider seven and I'm going to select, let's see what overall. Nope, we've, um, I'm just going to uh, select. See what I can find. Yes, yeah, so let's try um, a voice. How about tuning? So now that's assigned to tuning. Set that to default. There we go. <laughs> right. So that's all the all of the um, functions I'm going to assign on selection number one and i'm going to press this button here slider assigned to go to number two which says channel one to ten which is for midi playback so i'm going to change those as well so let's um let's select um okay this time maybe we'll select ambience depth And now this time I'm going to select slider five and assign that to something else. So let's just select, um, let's just select, let's go through. How about reverb? OK, one more example with the slider assign. I'm going to this time select slider number eight and I'm going to select a different function. I'm going to select. Um, let's see here. I'm just going to go through some. Let's say um, resonance. Let's see. Resonance will cut off. Let's see. Let's try cut off. We're going to leave it as resonance. Notice that the um, knob assign, uh, the knob is also changing colours here. That as I put it, put the resonance up, that changes, and as I put it down, that changes as well. Because if I believe so, let's see. The knob assign has also got resonance onto it as well. So if I, which one was it? Resonance, that would change as well because the knob assign is also assigned to resonance. Okay, so that's the um, slider assign. And now let me just go to 
let's go back to the sub screen and show you some of the things that I have changed. So one moment. Okay, so now we're back onto the sub screen. And as you can see that I've changed some functions, assignable functions. So instead of rhythm one, we got here tempo. And we also have here dynamics control. And finally, we have the tuning. And for slider assigned two, we've changed it. We changed it to ambience depth. For slider five, we did reverb. Notice that changes as well because I think that knob is assigned to um, reverb as well. And finally, we have resonance. And just one more quick thing. So I will take you back to the screen. One moment. Okay, so now that we're back on the screen, if you want to put the assignable functions back to its defaults, factory defaults, you simply hold down the function, so that's tempo, and it'll be back, you'll be back to volume, and dynamics control, hold it down, goes back to volume as the factory default, tuning, volume. And um, number two, ambient depth. No, we just um, factory, put that back to factory defaults. There you go, it's back to volume. Reverb, volume. So you just hold them down if you want to put them back to their factory defaults. The same thing goes to the knob assign, assignable buttons pitch bend, I'm sorry, um, the joystick assign and pedal assign. It all works the same way. So there you have it. And that is slider assign, where you can assign these sliders to all sorts of um, different functions. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and just like the slider assign, we also have knob assign, in which we can assign the knobs into different functions as well. So let me just show you the factory defaults of the knob assign. So we have this, and we have one, two, and three this time. So we can have three different sub menus and assign them into different functions. So we have cutoff, resonance, Attack, release, reverb and chorus. And on number two, we have ambient step, style reverb, dynamics control, style filter, style equalizer low, style equalizer high. And number three, we have keyboard filter, keyboard equalizer low, keyboard equalizer high, um, style mute A, style mute B, and style retrigger. Let me just show you the style retrigger quickly. Basically, it retriggers the style, which I think is pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change some of these knob assignable functions into different functions. 
I will direct you to the screen. One moment. Okay, so now the, the whole screen is visible as well as the sub screen as well. So I'm going to do exactly what I've done with the slider sign, but this time it will be the knob sign. So direct access, I'm just going to gently, that's it, gently touch one of the knobs and now We've got the live control and we can change the assign of these knobs here. I've already showed the, the sliders. Right, so just like the sliders, I'm not going to assign everything. I'll probably like do two or three per um, sub menu, like one, two and three, etc. OK, so um, I'm going to select knob one, which is by default cut off. I am going to change that. I'm going to change it into something else. Let's have a look. What shall we? Oops. What shall we do? How about doing it both ways? Cut off and resonance. I'm also going to change knob number two because now that I've assigned the first one to resonance and cutoff, so I'm, and number two is resonance by default, I'm going to change that into something else. I'm going to select this here. here. Um, Mixer, maybe. Um, bear with me while I select different. How about reverb? Um, no, I won't do reverb and chorus because reverb and chorus are assigned on these last two here. How about we do um, pitch bend? So now that will act as pitch bend. OK, and now I'm going to do one more example with the um, sorry, um, not one more example. I'm going to do one more assign on menu one. So let's say number five. I am going to change that into let's see here let's go to overall um no um how about we change it into keyboard volume but because the slider also has that assigned there this one that would also change as well notice there that changes because that slider is also assigned to the same function. OK, now I'm going to go to um, menu number two. I'm going to do a couple. I'm not going to do like loads. I'm just going to do a, a, just like a couple. So we got here. Um, let's have a look. I'm just trying to. Think of what functions to volume. I wonder what that is. I think. Oh, I, I get it. It's not a volume. It's not the volume of the style. It's just the volume of the sounds. What if I turn the other parts on? So we've got three sounds. Oh, yeah, that 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 just affects the first sound, um, right one. Okay, but we are going to leave it at, at that. Okay, uh, one more on menu two. So I'm going to change filter and assign it in. I'm going to assign that to. How about portamento time? 
portamento. So, oh, okay, that doesn't affect that sound. Okay, I know it affects um, some sounds. Okay, um, we, we can change that. Um, how about octave? Okay, and now I'm going to do a couple of assignments on menu number three. So let's go to number two. We're going to select a different um just gonna how about bear with me while I when I try and find a uh function to select. Balance, what does that do? That's just almost like the same as volume. Um, how about the pan pot? So now basically what the pan pot is, is it's currently on center, hopefully you can see. But if I put it all the way to right, Hopefully you can notice on the um, the video is that the sound is now coming from the right hand speaker. But if I put it right, I'm sorry, left, the sound will now come out on the left speaker. Just going to put that back to center. Okay, uh, one more example of the knob assign. I'm this time I'm going to do knob number six, which is um, style retrigger. I'm going to select that as something else. How about we do attack and decay, which is the sound. So now that I've assigned that, Hmm, doesn't make, let's just try something else. How about attack and release? There you go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So we assigned that to attack and release. Okay, so that's the um, knob assign. I've, I've changed um, a few assignable functions on there. And just like what I showed you on the slider assign, if you hold, if you hold down the um, assign, it would take it back to the factory default. Let me just show you quickly. I know it's on attack and release. Let's just put that back to normal. Um, attack and release. We hold that down. And it goes back to its factory default of style retrigger. Let's just go back to voice. Attack and release as I put it. Right. So now I will direct you to the subscreen and show you the changes. Okay, so now we're back onto the subscreen with some changes of the assignable functions on one, two, and three. So we've got cut off and resonance. On this knob, and on this one we have pitch bend. It kind of almost sounds like a tuning as well, if you think about it. And keyboard volume on this one. And notice because this slider is also assigned to the same thing, that changes as well. Okay, and number two, uh, let's see, have we done um, volume? 
which is basically the same thing really uh, as keyboard volume I think and uh, whatever what else did we do um octave so notice I'm not pressing the octave button I'm using the knobber sign and on number three we've done the um, pan pot all the way to the right the sound will come from the right right hand side and let's go to the left and now the sound is coming from the right and uh, the left hand speaker sorry uh, let's just put that back to center and finally I did attack and release which factory default this one is the style retrigger so I'll change that um, attack and release I'll get it now so putting it turning it right is the oops turning it right is the release and then turning it left is the attack rate So there you go, and that is knob assign, which is basically the same as slider assign, but you're assigning the knobs as well. Um, the, as I sh showed you earlier, the, the slider assign, you can only have two functions to assign, one and two. Um, B, I believe these can't be assigned. And with knob assign, we have one, two, and three different pages in which we can assign these knobs into all sorts of different functions, just as the same as slider assign. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is assignable buttons. So we've got um, six assignable buttons here. And we also have three more assignable buttons here next to the style control. Okay, so with the assignable buttons, um, there are already, already factory defaults of assignable functions set to the assignable buttons. So let's just take these six, for instance, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay, so A is the mixer, B is channel on off, keyboard settings, score display and lyrics display. Assignable buttons that are not lit, say F for instance, means that there's nothing assigned to it. So I press F no function is assigned. And also, if you've noticed that on the um, assignable buttons next to the style control, number three wasn't lit because even though there is something assigned to it, it's because I, I, I'm, I'm going to press number three now. Organ rotary slow fast disabled because that's what it's assigned to by default. But since we haven't got an organ sound selected, it doesn't light up but now let me just go to an organ sound you may not be able to see it but it's now lit up because i've selected an organ sound and it will toggle between slow and fast rotary so i'll show it to you okay let's put that back to piano so now I'm going to go through with you the assignable buttons and change different um, assignable functions. So you can either go to menu and go to assignable or you can go, go to direct access, which takes you to the same page. OK, so assignable buttons. I'm going to I probably won't do them all, but I will change some of them. So we've got some like shortcuts voices chord looper on off style and so on 
I'm going to um, change some of them. So let's uh, go to shortcut and I'm going to select chord looper for the first one. So that's been assigned to chord looper. Um, the second one I am going to assign to, um, let's see here. Let's try registration memory one and see what that does. Um, let's go to number three, keyboard. I'm going to um, set that to utility for shortcut. Um, I'm going to leave this one as it is, which is D, and now E, which is a text viewer or lyric, yeah, text viewer. Um, I'm going to select something different. Um, let's see here. How about we do style, start, stop? So as well as pressing the start, stop here. Notice that's lighting up because that also does the same thing because I've, I've assigned it to it. And now F, no assign by default. So I'm actually going to assign something in that assignable button. Um, I am going to select, um, let's say, Multipad select, which takes us to the multipads. There we go. So really easy, really simple. I'm also going to um, change a couple of the assignable buttons next to the style control. OK, so I'm going to change the live control joystick assign on assignable one, which takes you to the OK, <laughs> um, I'm going to change that. I'm going to change that in to, let's see here. Let me just try and find a function. Like style creator, and that will take us straight to style creator. Now, style creator, this is something that I'll be showing in the next video. So, yeah, so really simple. And now for the um, last assignable, which is organ rotary so and slow fast. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to change that into a half bar filling, which is really handy for some songs. So yeah, I'll, I'll show that to you once I um, once I assign it. Let's have a look. It should have it on there. Half bar filling. There we go. So number three next to the style control is half bar filling. So let me show you how that works. OK, so I'm going to select variation D and I'm going to press variation D again, the actual main variation button. Which plays the whole fill in. But now I'm going to press assignable three, which I've set to half bar fill in and that cuts the fill in in half. I'll set it to on rather, sorry. Yeah, I have to press it to turn it on and off. So now that half bar filling is turned on, when I press the main variation, the filling is cut in half. Let's do that again.
Okay, so that's half bar filling, and now I'm going to turn it off, and it will it will be back to the full filling. And um, we just press these, hold them, hold these to put them into their defaults. Also on the assignable two, notice that there isn't a fade in out button anymore like there used to be on the Tyros keyboards because we now have assignable buttons to do that. So we have the fade in out. So it's on standby until I press a, there we go, I press a key or the, play back the style. And now it's fading out. So that's just a quick point of the fade in out. Um, the fade in out doesn't have its own button like the Tyros keyboards did. Um, the fade in out can be assignable using these assignable buttons, which I think is, is, is really handy because you can assign it into a, whatever button you want. So there you go. And that is assignable buttons in which you can assign them into any sort of menu as I showed you on there, on, on this um, clip, and the assignable buttons next to the style control for the um, half bar fill-in and style creator. You know, just to show an example on how the assignable buttons work. Let's just go to it, like you, oops, sorry, there we go. Like you can assign it into many different functions here. Oh yeah, I selected um, assignable button A, registration, um, let's see. Ah, there we go, it just changed, it just um, selects the registration memory buttons as if you was to do this. Okay. <laughs> so there you go. And that is assignable buttons. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is the joystick assign, which I believe is something that wasn't featured in the original Genos. But correct me if I'm wrong. Now we, we can assign the joystick into different functions. Now by default, the um, joystick is assigned to pitch bend and modulation. But we can change those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press direct access because it's easy to do that. I am going to touch the joystick. There we go. And it takes us to the live control with the joystick. And now we have um, the joystick assigns and we can um, have them as um, our own functions. Okay, um, first of all, we have this here pitch bend range. We can change that. So. we can have it as an octave <laughs> the sound sounds somewhat different though um with the pitch bend if you have the pitch bend range to 12 so i'm going to put it down to put it up sounds like an old 90s keyboard <laughs> okay let's just put that back to normal okay and now we can have different assigns to it so we press that and then we have cut off and resonance hopefully you can see but on the um, knob here you can see the lights because I'm I'm changing it with a joystick 
and now we have there we go resonance and cut off so I am using the joystick here and not using these and we have the arpeggio gate time if you're using arpeggiators let's just go to an arpeggio um, it's going to change there you go arpeggio Okay, there we go, because it was set to hold. Arpeggio velocity, if you put the joystick down. And as I put the joystick up, it goes into higher volume. And I put the joystick left and right, arpeggio gate time. Okay, so that's the um, factory default assign with the joystick. Um, we can make our own functions. So I'm just gonna go to pitch bend here. So basically X and Y, so X, this is left, so. Oh, sorry, I had to change that. Here we go. So here's X, Y. No, sorry, X, left, X, right, and down, and Y, down. Yes, okay. It's almost like the XY mode on, like, the Korg M3 and other synthesizers. Um, okay, so let's just go and change these different functions. So we have octave. We can change this one as well. Um, we're going to change that into, um, let's see here. I will find a function. How about chorus? So I've got that to octave. So when I push the joystick left and chorus, well, it's actually set to, um, let's see. Yeah, chorus is set to um, it's a delay. <laughs> okay, and then we have um, we're gonna leave number two, so I'm gonna go to number three and change those. So mixer, we're gonna go to. Filter, what does that do? Okay, and I'm going to change this one as well. I'm going to change this one to style retrigger rate. So, but that would only work if the style's turned on. Okay, why is that not working? Oh, try that. Okay, maybe we should change that. How about style re-trigger? Oh, on and off and rates. There we go. So now we should get it. And um, let's go to the knob sign. Notice the starry trigger will change on that as well. Okay, I'm just gonna go to the modulation, which is the up and down arrows. So X is left and right here, and Y is up and down. Okay, so we're gonna change a couple of these as well. 
change the functions. Um, let's see here. How about um, master tempo? We'll do master tempo on both of them. There we go. So master tempo. Oh, I've got to, um... oh, it's weird. It's not even. Hmm, it's not even doing it. Um, let's just, let's try another function. Bear with me. How about we do release? So let's try it. Oh, I think I know why. Silly me, I was moving the um, joystick left and right instead of up and down. Okay, there we go. So now the tempo should change as I move the joystick up and down. Okay, and now I'm going to do one more example. I'm going to do joystick. I'm only going to change one of them. I'm, not, I'm only going to change as if I'm pressing the joystick down, not up. Just to do a quick example here. Okay, so um, I'm going to select. I know I've already. How about reverb? So as I. Okay, so that's all the um, the joysticks assigned. Well, not all of them, but just for this example. And then we press joystick assigned to have one, two, or three. So for one, we got octave, as if I was to octave when I press the move the joystick left, and chorus. If I move the joystick right and now down and up we have the master tempo and now the second one which oh sorry the second one which I, was, I left it as it is resonance and cut off and number three we got filter Um, moving the joystick left and style trigger moving the joystick right and reverb holding the joystick down and we left it as the arpeggio velocity if we was to hold the joystick up so it's amazing how we can now assign the joystick into different functions. I don't think you could do that on original Genos. So this is something new on Genos 2. And just like with the other assignable function functions that I um, showed, we just hold this down to get, hold these down to get the default functions. So, which is what I'm going to do. Master tempo, move that to modulation. And then I think that was already set to resonance. Yep, and change that as well. Put, huh? Looks like that was already, um, yeah, a bar pedio. Yeah, okay. So let's just exit out of that. And there you go. And that is joystick assign in which you can assign the joystick into many different functions. By factory default, the joystick is assigned to pitch bend if you move the joystick left and right, and modulation when you move the joystick up and down. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is 
pedal assign. So make sure you have a pedal connected to the keyboard as I do here. At the back of the keyboard, there are three pedal jacks. Um, one of the first one is sustain. The second is articulation when you're playing super articulation voices. And the third is volume. Those are the factory defaults. So I've got this connected to pedal one. Which is set to sustain, but I can assign it into different functions. So make it quick, direct access, and I'm going to press the pedal with my foot. There we go. And now we have the foot pedal assign. Um, we have one sustain, two articulation, and three volume. Because you can have up to three, you can connect up to three pedals. Um, for this instance, I'm only using one pedal, which is, of course, sustain. But I can change the functions. So we just go to that. There we go. We can change it into articulation one, two and three. Um, let me just show you real quick. Um, let me just play a super articulation sound. Uh, where are we? Guitar. So we've got this. I'm not pressing the ART1, ART2 or ART3 buttons, I'm using the pedal. Let's go back to the pedal functions, there we go. We have articulation 2, which is ART2. And articulation 3, if the sound you choose has an ART3 button light up. Um, okay. And we have sostenuto, which bas basically what that is... <laughs> Let's go back to piano. Basically, um, what sostenuto is, is that you you play a key or three keys, for instance, and then press the pedal. And only those notes will sustain. All the others will remain like this. So only the three notes I pressed and then pressed the pedal these are the only notes that will sustain with sostenuto. And now we have soft, so I've pressed the pedal. The sound will be softer. Glide, I wonder what that does. Okay, that's pretty cool. It's almost like as if, as if you're doing the um, pitch bend. Um, mono poly. Which, which changed to monophonic and polyphonic. Uh, portamento. And portamento time. I think it depends on the sounds that you... We can have it to pitch bend. A registration. Live control. So we've got the live control knob assign. So I'm going to tap the pedal. It takes us back. Hopefully you can see, but I'm not pressing the um, the live control knob assign. This, I'm not pressing the knob assign button. Notice the subscreen is changing its functions because I'm using my foot to change the um, little sub -men menus. Okay, uh, we have style. So we got like dynamics control using just my foot. Style, start, stop. So I'm not pressing the start, stop button or using any assignable buttons. I'm just using the pedal. Okay, let me show you a few more examples of the pedal assign. Okay, so we've got multipad one. Multipad two. Notice that I'm not pressing the multipads. I'm using the pedal. Multi-pad select, so the pedal takes us to the multi-pad select. Whoops. Oh, what am I doing? 
Okay. That's the multi pad stop. Um, cord looper record stop. So I'm not going to press record on the cord looper because I can just use the pedal to do that. But I'm not going to record a cord looper. Okay, a couple more examples. Um, let's see here. Okay, so for the style, let's say, let's go to fill down, which what that does, I'm not sure if you can see on the video, but it's on variation D now. I press the pedal again, variation C and B and an A. So it's going down. So that's fill down and I can do fill up, which goes to variation A, B, C and D as I play the pedal or press the pedal, shall I say. And say ending free as the last example. So I'm not going to press ending free. I will use it. I will use ending free, pressing the pedal with my foot. And then we just press this, uh, hold, on, hold down it, um, hold it down. And then we put it back to its default, sustain. The same foot pedal assignable functions can also be used in two and three. For this instance, I'm only using one pedal. But what I did here can also work with pedal two and pedal three. If you have three or two pedals connected to the keyboard. And there you go. And that is the pedal assign in which we can assign the foot pedal to many different functions. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and this is going to be the last of the assignable functions overall, and that is the home shortcuts. So we've got some shortcuts down the bottom of the screen. By default, we have channel, mixer, vocal harmony, live control, tempo, and demo. So we can change those shortcuts. So I will show that to you. So there's channel, mixer, vocal harmony, live control, tempo, and demo. And we can change those shortcuts. So I'll show that to you. So we're going to go to direct access, press one of the assignable buttons. And on top we have here, home shortcuts. We can change those shortcuts. So I'm just gonna do a few examples. So I'm going to change the channel on off and maybe um, shortcuts. Let's go to this select, um, Cord looper and on the next menu let's just say vocal harmony we're going to change that let's change that to um, split point and fingering um, live control we can change that we're going to change that into style creator and finally let's say demo we're going to change that we're going to change that to we're going to change that into utility okay so now that i have changed the, sh the home shortcuts i haven't changed them all but I've, sh I've i've changed the majority of them so the first one was originally channel on off and the third one was originally vocal harmony and the fourth one um, I can't remember now. <laughs> How silly of me. I thought I'd remember. Okay, so that the last one was 
default demo. OK, so now I'll go to exit and notice that they have been changed. So we've got cord looper. Mixer, I haven't changed that. Split point and fingering, which was defaulted as vocal harmony. I wonder if you can. No, I thought that if you hold them on the home screen, it would and put it back to defaults. And whatever that was, I've changed that to style creator. Tempo, I left as is. Um, we have utility, which was factory default demo. So we go to utility. So that's how you change the home shortcuts. OK, and now I'm going to hold down these home shortcuts and put them back to their factory defaults. Vocal harmony, uh, style creator, live control, that's it. A utility, hold that down, go back to demo. So there you go. And that is home shortcuts in which you go to the assignable menu in which we can change these shortcuts into different things of our choice, like style creator, multi-pad creator or utility. These home menus can be changed. So that is home shortcuts. And that is the entire of the different assignable functions. OK, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is registration memory. Well, we got um, we got 10 registration memory buttons. And with the user, we can load different registration banks here. So I will show that to you. I'm going to do a few things like change some sounds um, styles, effects, etc. And then I can save those as registration memories so that whenever I press one of these buttons, everything that I have done will automatically be called up. OK, so first of all, I'm just going to delete those and rename it so it doesn't affect this registration. So I'm going to go to menu, go to registration, edit. And I am going to remove them all. Yes, all. And then what I'm going to do is that I am going to, oops, uh, wrong one, go to file and I'm going to save. And I'm going to call this one because of this video. I am just going to call this example because this is an example of the registration memory. OK. And there you go. Example completely emptied when this one is unaffected okay and now i can start building this registration bank example so i will show that to you so first of all i'm just going to go through some sounds and some styles and then eventually start changing the volume and effects etc okay so the first one i'm just going to make this one simple I am just going to load a style. It doesn't matter which style. So I'll take this one, for instance. I'm going to turn the style on and I'm going to set it. You may not be able to see it, but I have set it to variation C. And what I'm going to do is select a one touch setting. Take that one, one touch setting. Once you're happy with your settings, you've got a style and you've got a set um, um, voices, all set, you've got your voices set up. Um, we just press memory and we're going to press one of the 10 buttons. And there are other things that, um, if, if you can see here, we've got some like ticks here, like voice and tempo. Um, these ticks are basically the things that you want the registration memory to save. Now, not all of them are ticked, but you can choose as to which ones you want to tick and which ones you don't want to tick. So maybe if I was to tick assignable buttons, 
anything that I have changed with the assignable, but assignable buttons will be saved. But I've, I've already showed you the assignable buttons example and all the other assignable functions. But if you wanted to save assignable buttons or MIDI setting, audio song, we just we just tick them if you want to save them. But these ones are saved by default. OK, so once you're happy with everything, press one of the 10 buttons. So I'm going to press one. And there you go. That's our registration memory stored. Right. The second one what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go through like more stuff. Um, I'm going to select a style. Again, it doesn't really matter which style. I am going to... Um, let's see here. Okay, I'll put that onto variation A and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press it again so I'll get a fill-in. Okay, so I, I know you can't see on the video, but that is what I'm doing. Um, and now, instead of one-touch settings, I'm going to select my own sounds. Um, so I'm going to select, um, if you just bear with me a minute, I'm just going to select some sounds. I'm going to, first of all, turn right two and right three off. I'm going to select my own sounds. So let's just take um, E-Piano 1, the X7, for instance. And for the second right to voice, I'm going to select strings. Um, let's see which strings. Just going to find one, like maybe some synth strings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the volume on these sounds. Um, I'm going to select, let's see here. Um, OK, um, right, right one and right two. So let's just put the... And I'm going to turn the right one slightly up. There you go. I'm also going to change the volume on some of the style parts and turn channel parts on and off. So notice that I've, I've changed the volume on some parts of a style. So it should sound like this. OK, and I'm going to go to exit. I'm going to turn channel parts on and off. Actually, because of the amount of um, channels that are being played, I will do that in the next example of registration. OK, so I've, chain, I've changed some of my um, the voices without one touch setting, change the volume on the sounds and styles, got to my variation, which is automatically set to a fill-in whenever I press the registration memory button. Once you are happy with your settings, we just press memory, and we will press one of the 10 buttons. So that is another registration memory saved. Okay. So the next example, I'm going to select a different style. Let's take this one, for instance. <clears throat> OK, one second. I'm going to put it onto uh, variation D. OK, 
Okay, and what I'm going to do is that I am, at fir first of all, I'm going to go to the channel. I'm going to turn parts off and I'm going to revoice some parts of the style. And that one as well. Yeah, I'm going to um, variation D. I'm going to select intro two. So, oh, hang on. Um, there we go. I'm going to turn some parts off. Okay, so I'll turn those three off. I'm going to select intro two. And now I'm going to change some more sounds. So if you bear with me, it's going to go through some sounds. Okay, um, let's um, do some synth sounds. It doesn't really matter which ones. I'm just doing this as an example. Okay. And with that, I'm going to change the DSP effect. We've got this here voice part set up, which I will show at the end of this video and how it all works. Um, I'm going to change the, uh, there we go. I just want to change a, a DSP effect. Let's go through some. Okay, and with this DSP console, I can change some things here. There we go. And we can feedback level, for instance. Input select. No, we won't go through that. Okay, and now I'm going to select another sound on the um, right two. So, um, what shall we go for? Bear with me while I try and find a sound. How about we go for a synth brass sound? It does help to turn it on. And let me just turn the volume up again with the sound. Let's put those sounds back to, there we go. So we've got this sound, we've added DSP and this sound, which I'm also going to change the DSP of that sound. So it's currently set to chorus. So we're gonna change that. I am going to, let's see which, which um, maybe we'll do like, instead of chorus, we'll do maybe like a phaser effect. So, Hopefully you can notice it on the video. 
but you can hear that phaser effect. Now let's see if we can, let's see here. Let's see if I can change it. Oh, there we go. That's pretty neat. Okay. Um, once you're happy with your settings, what I'm going to do, let's just get out of that for a second. Um, we're going to press memory and press one of the 10 buttons. And there we go. That's three styles, three sets of sounds, whether it be right one, right two, right three, or two, or all of them. Um, and turning channel parts on and off with a style um, and changing DSP effects. Right, now I'm going to do one more example of creating registration memories. Again, we are just going to select a different style. Um, it doesn't really matter which one. Let's take this one for instance, and this time I'm going to set it to variation C. I am going to use some guitar sounds for this one. So let's see here, electric guitar. I'm going to change the DSP of that. How about distortion? We're going to do a, a wah pedal. We're going to change. We actually we won't change the DSP, but we will change the um, parameters of the DSP. Distortion switch. Dis distortion drive. Distortion tone. So let's see. Delay time. Phaser switch. Let's turn that on. Okay, so I've um, changed some of the DSP parameters. Real multi effect amplifier. Okay, um, I'm also going to change let's see with the style let's see i'm going to change the reverb so we just go to the mixer chorus and reverb we're going to change that there we go revelation let me just um, tell you something real quick about this revelation that's a, a new reverb feature on Genos 2 called Revelation Reverb, which is from the Steinberg products. I will go through more in depth with digital effects in the next video. So let's change the effects. Hopefully you can hear it well, the reverb. I'm just going to see if I can reverb I think that's to do with the sound actually let's see if we go to the there we go the style we're gonna up the reverb let's see if we can do revelation let's see main top Main time, try that. But 
You can hear it. That might be too long, so I'm going to just slightly, there we go. What does, um, let's see, pre-delay. So I'm just changing some things here. Room size, um, shape, high cut, press detail. Let's see, the main time, maybe put that up if we can. Okay, we'll move out of that and we're going to select um, a couple more sounds. Um, I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to change some sounds and that's it. Uh, let's maybe do... Um, another electric guitar. Let's just turn that off so I can... Oh yeah, the reverb also changed. Yes, okay. So we got... I'm going to... I'm going to um, turn that sound up a bit. And for the last sound, I'm going to... Let's see, what shall we do? How about we have a bass sound? That's a pretty good sound. So... Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Let's try that. Okay. So I've changed the variety of things like the DSP, the reverb and volume and all sorts, really. Okay. So once you're happy with everything, we just press memory and one of the 10 buttons and there you go so i have saved four registration memories each containing different styles different sounds dsp reverb effects and volumes and turning channel parts on and off with a style so i will show those to you what i've done so here we have registration memory one Number two. There are, um, registration memory three in which I revoiced some parts of the style and turned parts on and off. And variation, I'm sorry, registration memory number four. Didn't seem to save the reverb for some reason, but that's okay.
there you go. And that is registration memory in which we can change settings on the keyboard as I showed you on this example. And then we can save our settings using the one of the 10 buttons of the registration memory, which saves a lot of time. Like you might forget what settings you've done or you know, it, it takes a long time, but one touch of a button calls up everything you have saved on the registration memory. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is one touch setting in which each of the 800 styles build, built in on the Genos 2, um, it has four one touch settings, which gives you sounds that are suitable for the style. So let me show you, let's take this one for instance, one touch setting one, two, or this one, or let's take this one for instance, So you've got all sorts of one touch settings to choose from, but just like registration memories, you can create your own one touch settings. Although in order to do that, you will need to save the style because you have changed one touch settings into your own. Okay, so what I'm going to do is that I am going to do with the, the registration memories, the sounds that I've done, and I'm going to save those as one touch settings in a style again it doesn't really matter what style i choose um it's just an example so let's just take this one for instance and we got the one touch settings And I can change them into my own one touch settings. The registration memories that I've done, I've done like different sounds and effects, etc. I'm going to change those into one touch settings. Okay, but when I change the one touch when I change these registration memories because of the settings that I've done, it's gonna change the style. So I think um you press the freeze button and there we go. Notice that the style doesn't change, just the sounds. Let's just go to that. Yes, because um, registration freeze. So it freezes the style. So like when you change the buttons, it just changes the sounds. It doesn't change the styles, but they these, as you can see, can be changed. But these are defaults. So it's a really handy thing. So... So we got the okay and now what i can do is that i can save these sets of sounds as one touch settings so i will show that to you do exactly as you would with the registration memory memory but instead of going through the registration memories we're going to do that with the one touch setting I know it gives us a um, one one touch setting data has been changed. If you select another style without executing the save operation, the data you cha changed will be lost. Save. Um, I'm going to select no at the moment because I'm not done with everything I need to do. And we're going to do this one as one touch setting two. And this one as one touch setting three. And this one, one touch setting four. And now that we've changed all of the one touch settings into our own, we will need to save the style. Okay, and we're gonna save, save here. I'm gonna change it. I am going to call it. I, I renamed it one touch setting change example. B 
because as well as the built-in one touch settings you can make your own but you have to save the style or if you create your own style you can make your own one touch settings again you've got to save the style because obviously when you create your own styles they won't have any one touch settings unless you make them yourself right so what style did i choose um okay i think it's this one isn't it there we go i chose that style and this is the built-in style with the built-in one touch settings <laughs> And now, same style, but with my own one touch settings. So there you go and that is one touch setting with the built-in one touch settings for each style and also the ability to create your own one touch settings just you know in exactly the same way as you would save registration memories but instead you'll be saving them as your own one touch settings but the style will need to be saved thereafter Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is registration memory sequence via pedal. So I've got my pedal down here, and sometimes when your, your hands are too busy with the sounds and styles, that you don't have time to press one of the registration memory buttons. So what's really handy is that you can make a sequence via pedal. So I will show that to you. Okay, so I've got my pedal, it's currently set to sustain. And I'm going to go to the menu and go to registration sequence. And now I'm going to set the sequence to on. Oh, before I yeah, set the sequence to on. So now I'm pressing the pedal. No sustain, but I'll turn it off. It'll be sustain because that's what it's assigned to. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to select a registration. I'm going to do that one again. Oh, I better save that one because I, I haven't saved it. Okay. And now go back to the registration sequence. And now we can make a sequence of these registration memory buttons. So we press one and we can insert or two, insert, or let's say four this time, insert, three, insert, five, insert. So we just keep inserting our sequence. Let's do, let's go back to three. Let's go in one, insert. Four. Oh, sorry. I, oh, I pressed delete by accident, but that's okay. Insert, insert and insert. So I have made my registration sequence. So let's just press that 
to go back to sequence number one. And now, instead of me pressing the registration memory buttons, it has, it has now been done via pedal with the sequence. So we got the order one, two, four, three, five, seven, six, three, one, four, seven. And it will go to that sequence. Oh, um, it should do it. Um, I wonder why it's not doing it. Um, oh, got to press stop. There we go. So we should be able to. Unless we have to save it first. OK, so the sequence is on, but it's in the right pedal. sequence data and I've saved it well it's weird it's doing it now okay I don't know why uh, why it was doing that why it wasn't working before oh probably because um, it was set to registration sequence so it, it doesn't do anything whilst I'm in the sequence. But if I get out of the sequence, it should work. There we go. And on top of the registration here, on the top left corner, the registration here, that's our sequence. If you, hopefully you can see. And when it gets to the end of the sequence, it stops. And it goes back to the beginning. Notice that the registration memories are responding via my sequence. And up there, hopefully you can see, it's going sort of like plus ways. And let me just go back to the sequence. Registration minus is pedal two. I don't have a secondary pedal, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to disconnect the pedal and put it into the second pedal jack. There we go. So now the registration sequence will descend. Hopefully you can see it's going down instead of up. So yeah, really amazing stuff. Although pedal Registration sequence via pedal has been going about for, for ages. I believe the Tyros has that feature. But it's really useful for when you, you're, both of your hands are busy and you don't have time to press the button, the registration memory button to change the sound. You can just simply use a pedal. I know that I have done this on a couple of song covers before. So it's really useful stuff. And there you go. And that is, oh, let me just, um, yeah, so the style. And the sounds change as well. So there you go. And that is registration memory sequence via pedal in which we can make a sequence of our registration memory with our registration bank and we can change the buttons using a pedal okay so now the last thing that i'm going to show you in part two of the tutorial of the yamaha genos 2 keyboard and that is voice control 
So we just go in to press the voice button with these gateway buttons. And this is the voice part setup where we can select our sounds, turn parts on and off as you would if you was to press the buttons on the far left um, of the far right side of the keyboard. And there's other things that we can change as well. I will show that to you. OK, so we have um, like mono and polyphony. So, so let's see here. So it's polyphony at the moment. So if I change that to mono. It's now monophonic. And let's just turn that one on. And we can do the same with that. Okay, we also have octave, we can change the octave. Press these two simultaneously to get the default. And with this we can also change the volume. can change um we can there you go the left hand side is now turned on we can change octave of that as well let's just turn these off and i'll show you and we have the pan pot as well. So it's currently on center, but if we put it to, that's it, right 63. Now the sound, the sound will come from the right hand side of the keyboard. And we put it to left. The sound will come out of the left hand side. Let's just put that back to defaults. I've got an idea. What if we oh, put that right and put that left? So now hopefully you can tell on the video, but the the FM sound is coming from the left hand side, whilst the piano is coming out from the right hand. Okay, let's just put those back to defaults. The same thing with the right hand free. Oh, I'm trying to press that, there we go. It's amazing how we can turn parts on and off using these and change the sounds pressing this as well with the voice part setup and see menu the voice edits and voice setting it's something that I will show you in the next video but for now I'm just showing you the the voice part setup menu let's put that back And for all parts, we can also change the equalizer. Let's say right one. High equalizer and low equalizer. Oh, sorry, my, um, my arm got in the way, so you couldn't really see. So I'll show that to you again. Just put this back to default. Okay, so yep, the high and low equalizer.
We can do that with all parts. Let's just put those back to defaults. So for that for that example, I've just been messing around with it on the right hand side, right one. But you can do it for right two and right three as well. They have their separate equalizer. And also we can change, we can turn off the DSP effects. Let's just turn that off and this one on. Yeah, we can turn off DSP effects and we can also change DSP effects as well. Straight from the voice part setup. We can change it on this one as well. I know it's not really the right DSP effect for a piano sound, but it's just an example. And also we can change down the bottom here, we can change the the, the mix of the insertion effect. So we got um, like insertion, chorus and reverb. We can change those as well. So it's on distortion at the moment. So we can actually turn that down. Right two, we can change the flanger. So it's um, a variation effect system. In and system gate read we can change that as well go back to the so there you go and that is the voice part setup menu in which we can change the sounds of the left right one two and three and turn these parts on and off we can change, we can switch between monophonic and polyphonic, change the pan pot and volume, op, change the octaves, do the uh, change the equalizer. We can turn DSP parts on and off and change DSP effects and change the insertion effects and variation effect. And that is the voice part setup menu. Okay, so this is now the end of part two of the Yamaha Genos 2 tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed this video and that you have found this tutorial useful, as well as part one as well. So please do write back to me and tell me what you think. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the next video in which will be the third and final part of the Yamaha Genos tutorial in which I'll be showing you even more in-depth stuff, such as song recording, style creator, multi-pads, um, installing expansion packs, etc. We'll be in the next video.